Hi. Have you ever walked through a bunch of thick, tall grass prairie? This stuff is hard to walk through. I'm often amazed how in the world did those early settlers or the Native Americans make it across hundreds and hundreds of miles of native prairie. Most of it was big blue stem, and that's what I have in front of me, mixed in with a little Indian grass. You know, they called their covered wagons prairie schooners because once they saw the prairie and it reminded them of the ocean, with this prairie grass, this tall prairie grass blowing in the wind, it looked like waves, and they had to take their covered wagons across that, uh, through that tall grass across the prairie. You know, it's amazing that they made it through. And, you know, if you watch any kind of movies, you often see where they had to start throwing off some of their precious belongings because it was such a hard trail. They were tough people. <laughs> but hey, I'm the Air Prairie Girl, and I am standing in my prairie. I have a, a nice uh, bunch of a blue stem here, and I'd like to talk to you about blue stem. So stick around. You know, another thing about prairies is that they are hot. They don't provide any shelter. So I am fortunate enough that my uh, piece of prairie grass here is right next to my windbreak. So I've moved a little bit into the shade here because it's hot. I am coming to you um, on Labor Day weekend, 2023. And if you're recall this weekend if you're watching right now we are having kind of a heat stroke and uh, a drought um, this August this past August um, and so thank goodness for some shade but prairie grasses like blue stem like to grow out in the prairie they prefer full sun um, blue big blue stem it'll grow almost in any type of soil it'll grow in black prairie soil it'll grow in sandy gravelly areas it really can tolerate any kind of soil it does kind of prefer a little bit of moisture um, but it is very very uh, drought tolerant so as you can see I've got prairie grasses um, blue big blue stem can grow up to be um, three to eight feet tall I'd say I have some more that are that are taller than eight feet here um, so they're very tr uh, drought resistant and we'll get to that when we talk about the roots it also blooms um, if you don't think about grasses they do bloom um, and they bloom um, in July through September and another name for big blue stem is turkey foot so this is the raceme and usually let's see if I can find one here usually they have a set of three right here here we got three, uh, three uh, spikelets um, that bloom, and that's why they're called why they're called turkey foot because most of them grow in a, uh, groups of three, um, and so it looks like a turkey foot. Although don't uh, don't think that that's the only way they come because sometimes you might have uh, way more than three, uh, might be up to seven or eight uh, different spikelets in that bloom there. So this is a big blue stem or turkey foot. Um, and you can see it's called that because it does resemble that of a turkey's uh, foot. Okay, Prairie Dog and I, we've gotten down into the big blue stem. And I have an a example here of the stem. Um, I hope you can see that it, it does resemble some uh, bluish tinge. Although towards fall, it starts to turn kind of a reddish color. Um, this is the stem. It's a very erect, tall stem. Like I said, it can get be very tall. Um, and this is a new term for me is calm, C-U-L-M. That's uh, the calm is the stem of a grass or a reed. So you can see here we ha um, it's very smooth. And then the leaf, this is a small leaf. As you can see, I have a lot of leaves here. The leaves get to be, oh goodness, almost two feet tall um, or long. And they're, they're rather narrow, about uh, a fourth or a half an inch um, wide. And um, they too can, um, they start out uh, a bluish green color and then towards fall, they start to turn almost a, a maroonish or a purplish um, color. So very, very pretty and very thick. Um, one of the benefits of big blue stem uh, in your prairie is that it provides a lot of coverage. Um, provides um, shelter for, um, for deer especially for uh, fawns in the spring. They can, they can conceal them in the, uh, does can conceal their babies in the um, clumps of the big blue stem. 
Um, also for birds, a lot of upland birds um, can hide in, in the tall grass prairie um, of the big blue stem. Um, also some benefits of big blue stem, uh, butterfly skippers. Um, um, uh, it's the host for several skipper butterflies and look at prairie dog and also um uh, birds birds uh, eat a lot of the seeds um, or use it for nest um, nesting material so a lot of benefit to wildlife of big blue stem um i mentioned that it's a, a bunch grass it grows in bunches and clumps um hard to walk around um but also those bunches um seem to attract uh ants a lot of times you'll find ant mounds um, in your tall grass prairie where there is bluegrass. I, I don't understand, but I read in more than one place that ants use the seeds from the bluegrass to decorate uh, their their homes, their mounds, uh, inside their mounds. Um, also very beneficial for um, wildlife to eat, uh, any hoofed animals. Um, cattle will eat uh, big blue stem although they will overgraze it if it's in an enclosed area and then also you know like bison and deer they have more of the migratory patterns and so they will eat um, big blue stem but they don't overgraze it because they move around and then also voles more than one time in my research voles came up um, as an animal that uh, benefits from big big blue stem Uh, big blue stem is also very high in protein. Um, it's been called, um, one of its names is cattle's ice cream because uh, cattle do like it so much and it's very high in protein. Big blue stem has a couple really great things going for it with its root system. Uh, first off, it's got rhizomes and those are like um, bulbs or roots that grow horizontally in the first one to two inches of the soil. And then after that, its roots go down, oh, people say between uh, 10 to 12 feet down into the ground. And so it can tolerate a drought or dry season because its roots go far, so far down into the ground. Now, like I mentioned, the early settlers, when they came to the prairie, they saw all of this big blue stem. Um, it's estimated that big blue stem covered probably 80% of the prairie um, in the, its grasses. And so when settlers got here, um, they had to till up this land to uh, farm it. And they found that the, um, the roots, and especially those rhizomes of the big blue stem, they really broke down in some, into some really rich organic material. And that's why they, uh, the Midwest here has set, had, had such great um, success with growing corn here because of um, all the big blue stem that had to be uh, plowed up uh, to, to make a crop. And I can't imagine, or I can maybe imagine, what work that was to plow up the roots of the big blue stem. In addition to the uh, big blue stone uh, root system providing such fertile ground for the early settlers, that root system also, those rhizomes, also held the dirt together when they um, made their sod houses. And so to, when they first came to the prairies, there was no wood um, to make a home, and so they would make sod homes. And so they would have to cut the prairie into strips and those rhizomes held the dirt together so that they could make almost like a brick uh, to pile up the sod to make a sod home. Other things that uh, this big blue stem was so beneficial for the early settlers was prairie hay. Um, like I said, this is uh, high in protein and so when they would um, hay it for their cattle, it, was, it would, would be great. About 80% of the grasses that they um, uh, Hayed was big blue stem. A few more names for our, our plant here. We've got big blue stem, tall blue stem, blue joint, and again that has to do with the, the, the sheath, the, the calm or the stem of the plant being a blue, and it's usually kind of blue around the node of where the leaf um, is on the, on the, on the stem. So, and it's kind of covered with a blue waxy substance. So we've got blue joint, um, beard grass, and I think that has to do with all the um, 
the top uh, flowering parts of it. And then we also have, like I said, turkey foot and cattle's ice cream. Now one of the huge benefits, oh, and I forgot, King of the Prairie. I don't know why I didn't start with that. King of the Prairie, because as I mentioned, it covered the vast majority of the tall grass prairies was covered with, with big blue stem. Again, another thing that I have totally failed to mention is the, one of the huge benefits of big blue stem and its root system is its erosion control. So both um, wind and water um, it prevents the erosion of the soil. Uh, so when the wind across the prairie, the, the uh, dirt was held in place by the roots of the big blue stem. And then also when you have a lot of water, and I know they plant uh, grasses and blue big, big blue stem along uh, streams to prevent erosion of the soil into, into the water. So great benefits of big blue stem, not only for wildlife, um, but also for the land itself. All right, well, it's getting hot out here. Like I said, it's the first weekend in August. We've got a lot of hot weather going on here. You can see Prairie Dog and I are both getting hot out here in the prairie. Um, so thanks for watching my video. Um, and, uh, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Really appreciate all you guys that follow me. And as always, I hope that you get a chance, uh, maybe not go out in the prairie on a 90 degree day. <laughs> But I hope that you get a chance to go out and enjoy nature. And when I do, I hope you see something wonderful. This is the Iowa Prairie Girl and Prairie Dog. Thanks for watching.